good morning students now we are going to discuss about the soldering of the pcb second part in the first part we discussed about the soldering materials different types of soldering materials different steps involved in the soldering different solder alloys and different solder fluxes when what are the precautions when we are using the soldering we discussed in the last class now we are going to discuss about the different types of techniques for soldering in the pcb soldering techniques so what are the soldering techniques we try to discuss here to achieve the solder joint to achieve the solder joint we have the solder and the base metal must be heated above the melting point of the solder we use the solder and the base metal must be heated above the melting point of the solder we use the necessary heat applied depends on the nature and type of the joint nature and type of the joint melting temperature of the solder melting temperature of the solder these two are depending on these two we having the nature and type of the joint melting temperature of the solder and next one is the flux so these are the necessary heat applied things we need to discuss general soldering method we now dev try to discuss among the soldering methods mentioned we will discuss the iron soldering mass soldering so we try to discuss about the two soldering methods iron soldering and the mass soldering first one is the iron soldering the most common method for general soldering is the use of soldering iron is the use of soldering iron so this type of method is called as a soldering iron the technique has a reasonable high state of perfection as far as the design of the iron is concerned the most common method for general soldering is the use of soldering iron it is also known as the hand soldering it is also known as the hand soldering you can see what we need to have in the soldering iron so in the soldering iron we need to have the a soldering iron consist of an insulated handle as shown in the figure we have the insulated handle insulated handle connected via a metal metal shank to the bit metal shank to the bit so what is the meaning is a soldering iron whenever we use the power supply it heats the shank to the bit the bit will be heated and that will be the bit will provide the required heat soldering bit you can see what is that the bit actually make contact with the component parts of the joint and the solder and heat them up the meaning is what the solder bit doing is solder bit contact with the component and also with the solder material in order to make the joint between these two that is the bit actually make contact with the component parts of the joint and the solder and heat them up and heat them up the component parts and the solder both are heated the electrical heating element is usually located in the hollow shank or in the handle the electrical heating element is 
usually located in the handle soldering irons are produced in an enormous variety of design and sizes depending on our requirement soldering irons are produced in enormous design and sizes of selection of an appropriate type depends on the intended application what application we are uh, doing so that that selects the different types of soldering iron the key to the function of the iron is the bit itself the key to the function of the iron is the bit by heat by heating the bit only we can make the joints together what are the functions of the bit what are the functions of the solder iron bit the bit of the soldering iron has to perform the following functions what are they the first function is it stores heat what it will do it stores the heat and conveys heat from the heat source to the workpiece the bit should transfer the heat from the heat source to the workpiece wherever we want to apply the heat there we need to transfer by using the bit the bit stores the heat and conveys the heat from the heat source to the workpiece it may be required to store and to deliver molten solder and often flux to the work workpiece the another function is it may be required to store it may be required to store and deliver the molten solder and the molten solder and often flux to the workpiece flux and molten solder on the work piece it may be used to remove surplus solder from the joint it may be used to remove the surplus solder from the joint so these are the three ca three functions some more functions also there it is essential that the bit surface is perfectly wetted what is the meaning it is essential that the bit surface is the bit surface is perfectly wetted this encourages flow of solder into the joint this encourages flow of solder into the joint when the surface of the work piece become wetted by solder a continuous film of liquid metal bridge the gap between the soldering iron bit and the work piece a continuous film of liquid metal bridge the gap between the soldering iron bit and the work piece this provides a path of high thermal conductivity along which the heat can flow into the work please this provides a path of high thermal conductivity along which the heat can flow into the work piece construction of soldering bit so what is the construction of soldering bit now we try to briefly discuss about this construction of soldering bit soldering bits are usually made of copper the soldering bits usually made of copper copper combines good wetting properties copper combines good wetting properties and the optimum heat capacity and thermal conductivity good wetting property optimum heat capacity and thermal conductivity however and erosion problem exists for long term use that is for the copper erosion problems may exist for the long term use tin lead solders will attack the copper and dissolve it during the 
soldering operation tin lead solders will attack the copper and dissolve it during the soldering operation erosion problem of copper can be minimized by coating of thick iron followed by nickel tin plating erosion problem of copper can be minimized by coating of thick iron followed by nickel tin plating in this way life of the bit can be increased by a factor 10 to 15 in this way life of the bit can be increased by a factor of 10 to 15 different sizes of soldering iron bits you can see the diagram we already mentioned so many types of soldering bits are there some of the sizes they mentioned here you can see a small to large thicker one is there shorter one is there thinner one is there depending on our application the size and the shape of the bit are largely determined by the amount of heat that has to be supplied during each joining operation for each joining operation how much of heat we need to supply so that decides the which type of soldering iron is used the bit shank must be sufficiently large to enable soldering of the required number of joints the shank should be sufficiently large to enable soldering of the required number of joints the heat input of an electronic soldering iron the heat input of an electronic soldering iron is mostly related to the intended rate of working mostly related to the intended rate of working the heat input of an electra electric soldering iron that is the wattage is mostly related to the intended rate of working the proper choice of soldering iron depends on whether occasionally a small number of individual joints have to be made whether continuous production line soldering of many joints has to be taken so depending on this proper choice we need to choose first one is whether occasionally a small number of individual joints have to be made then you go for one type of soldering iron or else whether the continuous production line soldering of maybe gen joints have to be taken now now we are going to discuss about the steps involved in soldering with an iron soldering with an steps involved in soldering with an iron what are the different steps we need to follow when soldering with an iron first one is clean the parts to be joined what are the points we are going to joint that point should be clean without having any contaminated parts on the joints then second one is apply the flux what we are doing is after cleaning the board now you try to apply the flux to the joints heat the soldering iron after soldering after applying the flux next step is the heat the soldering iron now the soldering iron whenever we are heating by using the electrical supply the soldering bit will be heated the soldering iron at soldering temperature is held on the work pieces to heat them what happens soldering iron at soldering temperature is held on the work pieces to heat them the solder is usually in the form of wire the solder is usually in the form of wire stick wire stick or 
perform is preform stick or preform is available in the market the solder or the melted material is the is usually in the form of wire in the form of wire a stick or preform is available in the market solder is applied to the work piece close to the bit if enough solder has been applied it will completely penetrate and fill the gap of the joints the meaning is if enough solder has been applied it will be completely penetrate the and fill the gap of the joint if flux code solder was not used the joint must be cleaned and it must be treated with the flux what is the meaning is the if flux code solder was not used the joint must be cleaned and it must be treated with flux the time required to keep soldering iron on work piece is entirely dependent on the nature of the joint and characteristics of the soldering iron the meaning is how much time we need to use the iron rod or iron bit on the work piece so that is completely depending on the nature of the joint and characteristics of the soldering iron when the joint appears to be sufficiently filled the soldering iron is removed when the joint appears to be sufficiently filled the soldering iron is removed and joint allowed to cool down and joint is allowed to cool down undisturbed cool down undisturbed way so these are the eight steps we need to follow while joining the joints by using the iron soldering the first step already once again we try to discuss the first one is the clean the parts to be joined apply the flux heat the soldering iron then soldering iron at soldering temperature is held on the work pieces to heat them the solder is usually in the form of wire stick or or preform is available in the market solder is applied to the work piece close to the bit where it should melt immediately and become bright and fluid if solder has been applied it will completely penetrate and fill the gap of the joint if flux core soldier was not used the joint must be cleaned and it must be treated with the flux the time required to keep soldering iron and work piece is entirely dependent on the nature of the joint and characteristics of the soldering iron when the joint appears to be sufficiently filled the soldering iron is removed and joint allowed to cool down undistributed and disturbed way after completion of iron soldering let us focus about the mass soldering the next method is the mass soldering mass soldering technique so what is the mass soldering technique mass soldering technique is used when large number of joints are to be made simultaneously using a solder bath whenever you want to made a large number of joints simultaneously using the solder bath that type of soldering is called as the mass soldering solder bath acts as the source of heat as well as filler metal 
solder bath is act as the source of the heat as well as filler metal coming to in the so I, soldering iron we having the bit is there bit is used as the source of heat and that is the solder is used as the filler metal in the solder mass soldering solder bath only act as the source of the heat as well as filler metal the most important soldering technique employs some form of immersion of contact with a molten solder bath the main thing is the most important soldering technique employs some form of immersion some form of immersion or contact with a molten solder bath mass soldering technique is used in large electronic industries mass soldering technique is used in large electronic industries what are the advantages of mass soldering now we try to discuss what are the advantages of mass soldering the mass soldering is high productivity it provide it having the high productivity more rigorous control is possible over all the individual stages are soldering more rigorous control is possible over all the individual stages of soldering it makes more reliability of the final assembly the mass soldering makes more reliability of the final assembly so what are the different methods which we are used for mass soldering methods used for mass soldering components are mounted on one side of the boards components are mounted on one side of the boards their connecting leads pass through the component holes their connecting leads pass through the component holes leads are the solder to the conductive tracks on the other side of the boards leads are then solder to the conductive tracks on the other side of the boards for high production rates making all these contacts manually would be very slow and costly task where we are using mass mass soldering means generally in the industries components are mounted on one side of the boards and their connecting leads pass through the component holes the leads are then soldered to the conductive tracks on the other side of the boards for high production rates making all these contacts manually would be very slow and costly task for this we are going to go into mass soldering if we can be provide economic economic solution the mass soldering provides the a good solution for this connection so what are the methods to use to apply the flux here the initial flux must be applied to the pcbs what we are doing in the mass mass soldering initial flux must be applied to the pcbs flux is usually of rosin type used dissolved dissolved in an organic solvent dissolved in an organic solvent the flux choosing also very very important after soldering the flux should be removed from the pcb so in order to get that that function we need to do flux is usually of rosin type used dissolved in an organic solvent here we having the methods for use to apply for the flux is dipping the board onto the surface of a bath with flux dipping the board on the surface of a bath 
with the flux second one is the brushing we need to brush the surface of the board after spraying using a special spraying cabinet special spraying cabinet is used rolling in contact with a plastic foam rubber roller impregnated with flux rolling in contact with a plastic foam rubber roller roller impregnated with flux wave fluxing that is by passing over a standing wave of liquid flux standing wave of liquid flux foam fluxing when the standing wave is of formed flux after flux coating the pcbs are usually heated to remove the bulk of solvent prior to soldering after flux coating the pcbs are usually heated to remove the bulk of solvent prior to soldering if this is not done gases may form air locks during soldering during the soldering which may results in areas of the board not being wetted by melted solder which may result in areas of the board not being wetted by the molten solder in the case of inline soldering machines drying is carried out by passing over controlled infrared heater or heat hot air blowers in the cases of inline soldering machines drying is carried out by passage over controlled infrared heater or heat or hot air blowers now we discussed about the different types of soldering first soldering is the dip soldering principle of dip soldering in simple dip soldering the pure fluxed assembly is lowered vertically and the clean solder surface until it makes contact in simple dip soldering the pre fluxed assembly is lowered vertically and the clean solder surface until it makes contact immersed in the solder bath to the required depth immersed in the solder bath to the required depth immersed in the solder bath to the required depth the surfaces become wetted by the solder the surfaces become wetted by the solder solder penetrate and it is retained between them by capillary forces it is essential that the surface of the solder is freshly cleaned to sweep the oxides and flux residues to one side of the bath immediately before dipping the assembly it is essential that the surface of the solder is freshly cleaned to sweep the oxides and flux residues to one side of the bath immediately before dipping the assembly solder part construction next one is the solder part construction solder part is usually made of cast iron or steel and is electrically heated solder part is usually made up of cast iron or steel and is electrically heated it should be large enough to take the intended size of board the spot solder should be large enough to take the intended size of boards it should be large enough to provide mass of molten solder 
to counteract local cooling effect when the board is immersed the spot part should be large enough to provide mass of molten solder to counteract local cooling effects when the board is immersed the principle of dip soldering now we try to discuss principle of dip soldering is a solder bath solder part we having the solder part solder bath is there then we are making the component side of pcb component side of the pcb now we see what we are doing is what we are doing is dipping into the solder bath what happens component side pcb the bath temperature should be suited to the nature of the assembly being processed and other factors such as mass thermal conductivity specific heat the bath temperature should be suited to the nature of the assembly being processed and other factors such as mass thermal conductivity specific heat the solder bath temperature the solder bath temperature is normally within the range of 220 degree centigrade to to 60 degree centigrade for 10 lead alloys close to the eutectic composition for lead rich alloys the temperature may be increased to 350 degree centigrade to the 400 degree centigrade the time of contact with the solder should be minimum for complete wetting of all surfaces by the solder for filling all joint spaces by capillary action the contact time with the solder should be minimum both the time required of contact and optimum temperature of the solder bath are best determined by trial before the beginning of production run before going to the production we need to do the trial runs both the time required of contact and optimum temperature of the solder bath are best determined once the optimum parameters are determined they have to be strictly maintained by an automatic control for time and automatic control for temperature will be an advantage yes the solder composition for dipping bath in electrical and electronics application is normally 60 percentage of tin 80 percentage of lead so this is the solder composition for dipping bolts in electrical and electronics applications the next one is the angled dip soldering so this is another type of soldering angled dip soldering however the better purity of the initial solder the longer it will last until the impurity level becomes significant however the better purity of the initial solder the longer it will last until the impurity level becomes significant for soldering of pcbs in simple dipping method it is advisable that one edge of the board is lowered into contact with solder first it allows escape of flux and remaining solvent vapors it allows escape of flux and remaining solvent vapor that is called as a angled dip complete contact can then be made after 2 to 3 seconds upon with drawing the board an angle path should again be used to assist solder drainage minimize ic icles and solder bridges between adjacent conductors now you can see angle dip soldering method what the dipping is in the form of angle method 
with the particular angle we are dipping so that is the angle so this is the another type of method angle dip soldering method the advantage of angle dip soldering method is uh, we discussed that it allows the escaping of the flux and remaining solvent vapors it escapes the flux and remaining solvent vapors that is used in angle dip soldering next method is drag and wave soldering drag and wave soldering a number of modification to the simple dip soldering process have been introduced with the aim of speeding up the process and making it more automated for making the more automated what we are doing is a number of modifications to the simple dip soldering process have been introduced with the aim of speeding up the process and making it more automated the main the ones mostly used are drag soldering wave soldering the two type of soldering are these are the modifications of the dip soldering the basic concept is dip only but these are the other type of solderings drag soldering wave soldering in drag soldering a conveyor a conveyor system is used to move the pcb a conveyor e system is used to move the pcb therefore it passes successively over a fluxing station therefore it passes successively over a fluxing station that way it is called as a drag soldering a conveyor system is used to move the pcb and it passes successively over a fluxing station a flux dryer or preheating stage then over the surface of a long and narrow solder bar there then over the surface of a long and narrow solder bar after uh, drag soldering at the beginning of the passage over the sold bar the board is lowered at small angle travels horizontally gently along the solder surface before being withdrawn the pcb is withdrawn at small angle to assist solder drainage the board is lowered at a small angle travels horizontally along the solder surface before being withdrawn the pcb is withdrawn at a small angle to assist the solder drainage you can see drag soldering it is moving with the conveyor belt and dipped with a a simple angle and then it is moving so like that we are soldering by seeing the drag method control system can vary the speed of travel over the fluxing station solder bath so here the drag soldering the control system can vary the speed of travel over the fluxing station solder bath often facilities may be provided for increasing the time of contact with the solder by a predetermined dwell period often facilities may be provided for increasing the time of contact with the solder by a predetermined dwell period before the pcb makes contacts with the solder surface a horizontal scraper bar travels along the bath to remove oxide films and any flux residues leaving a clean solder surface 
to facilitate wetting to facilitate the wetting so this is called as a drag soldering this is called as a drag soldering so what we are doing is in the drag soldering we having the conveyor system which may drag the pcb and it will dip into the or lower the component and dip the component in the solder bath in a simple angle after the next part will be dipped with a some other angle that is called as a drag soldering the next method is the wave soldering the next method is the wave soldering what is the principle of wave soldering the wave soldering instead of lowering the boards onto a solder bath solder is pumped out of a narrow slot to create a standing wave in the solder bath so this is a one more modification that is in wave soldering instead of lowering the board onto a solder bath solder is pumped out of a narrow slot to create a standing wave in the solder bath the boards the boards after passing over the usual fluxing and drying sections are conveyed across the crest of the solder wave by a conveyor system which follows a straight line path this path may be inclined upwards at a small angle to the horizontal 5 to 15 degrees in order to assist solder drag drainage after the boards have passed the wave so this is the wave soldering that is solder is pumped out of a narrow slot to create a standing wave the dry, the drainage and distribution of solder may also be improved by choosing a particular wave forms mentioned below against the direction of board movement double crested solder flow flat topped solder flow unidirectional solder flow this type of wave flow is created in the solder bath so the three types of waves are double crested solder flow flat topped solder flow unidirectional solder flow the principle of double crested solder flow you can see what happens you can see the wave how it is getting the wave like this double crested solder flow so again we can see how it is flat topped solder flow you can see flat topped solder for how it is moving So now we can see flat topped is here the flat and topped is there how it is moving conveyor belt moving so wherever we having it will move the solder and it is moving next you see the unidirectional solder flow how it is unidirectional solder flow it is moving conveyor like this you can moving like this advantages of wave soldering is virtually oxide free surface being continuously generated on the solder virtually oxide free surface being continuously generated on the solder air flux and flux vapors are dis dislodged by rapid movement of the solder at the end let us discuss about the solder masks solder masks masks also very very important 
ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಕೋಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಟು ದೋಸ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ವೇರ್ ನೋ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ವೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಎನಿ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ವೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಕ್ ದಸ್ if a pcb is selectively coated with a solder mask only such areas to which components are to be solder are left exposed so those that is also a important factor solder mask solder mask also called solder resists or organic coating which are applied selectively to those areas where no solder wetting is desired thus if a pcb is selectively coated with a solder mask only such areas to which components are to be soldered are left exposed so now we try to conclude what we discussed here in this we conclude that the general soldering methods used are the iron soldering mass soldering the key to function of soldering iron is the bit itself so mass soldering techniques is used when large number of joints are to be made simultaneously using a solder bath in simple dipping soldering the pre fluxed assembly is lowered vertically and the clean solder surface until it makes contact in simple dipping method it is advisable that one dig one edge of the board is lowered into contact with solder first which is also called as angle dipped soldering it allows escape of flux and remaining solvent vapors a number of modifications to the simple dip soldering process have been introduced with the aim of speeding up the process and making it more automated the ones mostly used are drag soldering wave soldering in drag soldering boards are lowered with an angle and moved horizontally along the solder surface before being withdrawn and it is withdrawn at a small angle to assist solder drainage in wave soldering instead of lowering the boards on a solder bath solder is pumped out of a narrow slot to create a standing wave in the solder bath different types of wave soldering techniques are double crested solder flow flat topped solder flow unidirectional solder flow the next topic is the pcb specification so where we are to use what are the different specifications of the pcb whenever we try to choose a pcb what are the specifications now we try to discuss what are the specification means in order to fabricate pcb for general or industry purpose there must be standard rules so that it makes the convenience for the users these rules cover pcb specifications general pcb specifications are physical characteristics under physical characteristics the important specifications are board size conductor width spacing between the conductors minimum plated holes diameters so these are called as a physical characteristics of the pcb that is under physical characteristics the important specifications are board sizes conductor width spacing between the conductors minimum plated holes diameters the pcb design rules are you can see a description through holes track width pads 
track to track distance path to track via pad pad density recommended r is given by using this we need to design the PCBs electrical characteristics of the PCB means under electrical characteristics the important specifications are rated current breakdown voltage insulation resistance rated current breakdown voltage insulation resistance contact resistance are the electrical characteristics of the PCB so another one is environmental characteristics under environmental characteristics the important specifications are ambient temperature vibration resistance shock resistance and contact materials these are the some of the environmental characteristics of the pcb electrical characteristics uh, already mentioned in the uh, test you can see so these are the electrical characteristics specification you try to see conclusion we conclude that physical electrical environmental characteristics are the important specifications of the pcb so is 7405 part 1 and part 2 are some of the standards of the pcb specifications so in this class we discuss about the different types of the soldering techniques and specifications of the PCB. Thank you.